The Gold Coast Titans, the club who no one really dislikes because they've never been competitive enough to warrant jealousy, and because AJ Brimson is so likeable. The Titans are one of the more unique sides in the NRL. They've got a whole heap of guys who NRL fans generally agree are really good players, the likes of David Fafida, Tino Faso Malawi, AJ Brimson, and Jaden Campbell, and yet it never seems to translate into consistently good results for them. Everyone has the same criticism of the Titans. All the attacking weaponry in the world, but a lack of defensive metal that sees them fade in and out of games. If the Titans can find a way to solve that and become an 80 minute side, they'll be putting the rest of the league on notice. It feels like the Titans had their moments last season, more so than their bottom four finish suggests, but a decent enough recruitment drive and the signing of a coach like Des Hasler will hopefully bring the success to the Gold Coast that the fans have been wanting since the club's foundation. Getting into their transfers, their biggest gain for me this season is an easy question to answer. Keenan Palacia was an important part of the Broncos' grand final side last year and indeed played very well in the grand final. The Titans do of course already have a lot of strength in their front row, likes of Tino, Mo Fotowaka, Premiership winner Isaac Liu, throw Keenan Palacia into that rotation and all of a sudden you've got a very, very strong rotation. One where, importantly, you can bring the starting front rowers off and not particularly lose a great deal of quality. At 27 years old, he'll be looking to make a home at the Gold Coast, and that is exciting for their fans, being a club who have had a lot of roster turnover in recent years, players coming and going, not particularly settling in the area. I do have confidence that Palacy are coming over from Brisbane, obviously a very short distance away, won't struggle in that regard. The biggest loss for me would be Cruz Leeming, and he's a, he's a decent player, he was good for the Titans, but to me that's more of a sign that they're not losing a great deal of quality and won't particularly slide back as a squad. Obviously Cruz Leeming is a hooker, the Titans already have Sam Verrills, Chris Randall, even Aaron Clark could play in that role. So that's not a loss that the Titans will particularly be feeling. Speaking of some of those young guns though, we've got my first major talking point which is how do you fit all of these spine members into one side? Obviously guys that are in contention for those spine spots in fullback, you've got the likes of AJ Brimson, Jaden Campbell, Keanu Keeney, Nhaas, you've got Tanner Boyd, Kieran Foran, Tom Weaver, Hooker Chris Randall, Sam Verrills. There is ample quality in those names and that level of competition for those spots is something that you don't particularly find in a lot of other NRL rosters. Obviously this is an issue that has been spoken about a lot. I love AJ Brimson. I think he's electric. I think he's the best player that the Titans have in the spine but he's also the most versatile and he'll be a victim of that versatility I think in 2024 when he is selected to play at center. I think he's a better fullback than he is a center. I think he's a better 5'8 than he's a center. But unfortunately, Jaden Campbell is not as versatile in my opinion and obviously neither is Kieran Foran. So I would have AJ Brimson at center with Jaden Campbell at fullback. Keanu Keeney is obviously a very talented player coming out of Queensland Cup, but I see no harm in keeping him there just for the time being, letting him work on his game, and of course, any injuries occur, any origin selections occur, and Keeney will be in the squad somewhere. Moving into the halves, I think after the season Kieran Foran just had for these young Titans, his role in the squad is pretty much cemented. It then becomes a shootout for the halfback jersey between Tanner Boyd and Tom Weaver both Australian schoolboys halves. Boyd has shown over his career the versatility required to play Jersey 14, but I think that's a bit tough on him personally. He had a good season last year, the best of his career. He gelled with Kieran Foran well, and you could see what they were building towards the end of the year. Weaver did impress when he was given opportunities, but I don't think Tanner Boyd has done anything to deserve being dropped, and in my opinion, he shouldn't be. Tom Weaver was impressive in the opportunities that he had, but I don't think Tanner Boyd has done anything to deserve being dropped, and in my opinion, he definitely shouldn't be. So I would have Tanner Boyd and Kieran Foran in the halves. Now for me, it's also an easy decision to have Sam Verrills playing hooker. He's one of the only premiership winners in this Gold Coast side. He is a very good hooker. 
who's just been plagued by injuries that has stunted his development. If he stays on the field, I really think people's perception of Sam Verrills will go up quite significantly this season. And that then leaves me with Chris Randall, who I'll be putting in the number 14 jumper. Obviously, he is a very, very capable hooker, but we saw towards the back end of last year him coming on as an impact middle forward, and he was very, very good in that role. So just that versatility means that, to me, he's best suited in that 14 jumper. And Des Hasler can see how the game is playing out, see if he can leave Sam Verrills out there and bring Chris Randall on for a little more impact through the middle. On to talking point number two though, and I've got how does Bo Furmore go? Now, he was the Titans' best back rower in 2022. David Vida is obviously the star man on the big contract, but Bo Furmore's form was extremely impressive and led to him being welcomed into the Queensland State of Origin camp. He's a quick back rower, he's a really good line runner. The thought of him hitting holes with Jaden Campbell running up in support on the inside could be extremely, extremely dangerous for the Titans. But obviously we do tend to see players come off the back of ACL injuries and take a while to warm back up to form. We saw it a bit with Christian Welch last season, and we've seen the likes of Satili Tupanua for the Roosters struggle to get that explosiveness that we know he has in his arsenal. So obviously everyone wishes for all the best this season. We all hope we can see the form that we know that he can produce, but it is a very, very tough task to return from these injuries and hit the ground running. On to my best 17 for the Titans though this season. As you can see, I've highlighted a few guys to talk about here. AJ Brimson at center, who I mentioned earlier. I do think that he has the necessary strengths to play center. He is a quick player. I think the quality ball that he can get, Alafi Cam Pereira, will be very, very important. We've obviously seen the speed that Cam Pereira has, so Adrian Brimson using that footwork and that playmaking ability could see Cam Pereira score as many tries as he did last year. The other major talking point that I didn't mention earlier is moving Tino Faso Malawi out of the 13 jersey. Now I am a very big fan of the slightly smaller ball playing block, the likes of Cameron Murray, Victor Radley. I think Aaron Clark has that kind of ability to play in jersey 13. Obviously Tino Faso Malawi does have that ball playing skill, but I just think his form in front row for the Kangaroos at the end of last season was fantastic. And I think that's probably where he's at his most damaging, where he's thinking run first rather than get the ball to the weapons around him. I do think one of the keys for the Titans this year will just be getting the ball in the hands of the likes of David Fafita, Bo Fermore, AJ Brimson. As for the more link players you have there, that'll only help that cause and that's exactly what Aaron Clark will be doing. So obviously let me know your thoughts. How would you line up that spine? Would it be any different to mine? Do you think that Dez is the kind of coach that the Titans have been crying out for? And what general changes would you make to my best 17 for the Titans this year? Thank you for watching. See you later.